Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Frozen Fortunes. Now, today it's the big one, basically. We're away against Schalke in the Champions League. A win sees us top the group and qualify for the next round. A draw will see us qualify in second, and a defeat... Well, we could still go through with the defeat, but we need a miracle uh, coming from Shakhtar, and that's a bit unlikely, isn't it? Do you use cross from dip on your wing backs? Um, <laughs> um, when are the dip puns going to stop? To be honest, I'm not entirely sure I want them to. I'm sad that Aldo Safey didn't get to be manager of Stockport. It would have been in safe hands. Well, uh, it's funny you should mention that, actually, because um, I think it would have been too, and I'm really starting to think that Aldo Safey might well be my favourite player on this save, uh, some of the things he's done. Um, but you guys seem to like the idea of having the players as backroom staff, so I'm going to try and figure out where to sort that out for um, our save with Stockport. Now, the idea is also, I'm going to add a new Patreon thingy as a perk for one of the levels um, that will allow some of you guys to be backroom staff on the stream save, Outcast to Icons, because I just think that'd be a bit of fun too for those of you that kind of interested in that sort of thing but yeah so looks like we are going to be using some of these guys as backroom staff so let me know um if you could what sort of players you'd want to see in the backroom staff i'm not going to put like polls out i'm just kind of curious to see what you guys in the comments and if you see a comment that you agree with like it but what players you'd want to see on the backroom staff but more importantly what position in the backroom staff whether that be physio scouts assistant managers all that kind of stuff let me know who you'd want to see and where and of course uh yeah Talk amongst yourselves. I thought we'd take a little look at Diego Maurizio since he started the season so incredibly strongly and is technically the top scoring player on our team at 18 years old. I think I said he was 16 last time and I don't know where I got that from. He's worth 1.8 million for us right now. He's only got two years on his contract uh, and that's something we might need to take a little look at. Oh! Well, there you go. He now has five years left on his contract. That was a nice, easy one for us to sort out. And he's on nice low money too. He'll probably ask for a, an upgrade at some point on that one. But he's got 11 goals in 11 starts in the league and five assists. Um, terrific. And also one goal off the bench in the Champions League. Now, he did score 18 in eight uh, playing for the reserves as well. The guy's been smashing them in for that. It's such an absurd record he's got for those lower league teams. That we just needed to get him in the first team and fast. I'll be very curious to see what this lad goes on to do in the looking forward, frankly. Because this year, he's just not going to get the chance. Now, we've had a couple of games off camera, so we'll quickly discuss that now before we get into the big one. First up, we were away at Rana's. A fairly simple one for us. Um, we still had to fight hard for this one. Diego Mauricio's goal was all that made the difference. Last, uh, Lars Sudensen was sent off for Rana's. Uh, it didn't matter, though. We got the clean sheet in the win. Next up, though, at home, much more comfortable. Two goals for Vlad Herseg and one for Aldo Safi. The man just gets these goals. These are goals from open play. Well, sort of from open play as well. They're not like corners. They were free kicks where the ball is rattling around and he's in his positions and he's scoring goals for us, frankly. Um, he's got a very good goal record for a centre-back, frankly. And another clean sheet. Um, it's getting a bit silly now on the old clean sheet front too, which is nice. All that has left the league looking like this. We've won 17 out of 18 games and we've lost the other one. I couldn't believe that we lost one game. Um, 16 points clear at the top, as you would imagine. Kurya, I believe, lost a couple. They've started to slip a tiny little bit. Still looking pretty comfortable though with their chances of getting into the championship group. I'd really like to see that happen. Uh, Copenhagen have picked up the pace a little bit now and are starting to chase down uh, the likes of Midtjylland. Um, still going to be tough for them, but I think they'll probably get away with it. Down at the bottom, some of the goal differences is for Shellerup and AC Horsens. Minus 28 and minus 24 goal differences. Only one win in 18 for Horsens. Four for Shellerup, but 14 defeats. Um, Diego Maurizio up there with the top goal scorers. Joel Lucio, look at that. Average rating, a 7.51 rating for Joel Lucio. Uh, a very surprising thing there. He's been an absolute rock in the league for us and has netted a few goals, I think, as well. Very nice to see. Now, weirdly, Ricardo came to me and said he wasn't getting enough football and he wanted to leave. And I don't understand that one bit. Um, because he started 13 matches this season and is playing in the first team as our first choice box to box midfielder. So I cannot understand why he doesn't want why he hasn't been complaining about that. I, I think it's because we've had to play the reserve team a few games in a row and he's already got on my back about it. Bit annoying, but I've had to promise him that I'm gonna give him some more first team football, which could cause a problem because I might have to play him in some games I don't want him to. And also while we're on the topic of players, Zdenic Krejci is now sponsored by Jack Hughes on the Patreon, so that is awesome. Um, hopefully we can see an upturn in form like we often do in these situations. Um, but then again, he's been pretty good lately, so maybe he knew. Now, today we're at, well, we're away at Schalke and Sporting at least are away from home against Shakhtar. So there might be the slimmest hope of them helping us out, but I'm still not holding my breath on that one. I think we're really gonna have to do the job ourselves. However, I do wanna quickly just flash you back and talk about something that happened uh, the day after our last game. And that is that Benfica beat Panthenaikos 10-0 which brings me to my question of the day. I thought I'd ask it here. What is the biggest win you've seen for an AI team in the Champions League? Uh, like in the proper Champions League. 
The fact is also, Alexander-Arnold and uh, Saiz got four goals apiece in this game, with one for Una Turan and one for Antonio Marcos. Benfica are not to be messed with, are they? 10-0! That's ridiculous! And if you do have any ideas for a question today, drop those in the comments too with the hashtag QOTD. Something I'm also going to do, if we were to get through today, and oh dear, I don't know what's going on with Schalke's kit there. Seems the kit pack doesn't have the Schalke kit in it. I swear it did before. What's happened here? I must never have paid much attention to this before. My kit pack apparently doesn't have the German kits in it, which is a little bit annoying, but there you go. Why didn't I notice that the first time we played them? Our mission is simple. We have to come here and win if we want to. Uh... Oh, what I was actually going to say is, if we get through to the next round of the Champions League, you will see the draw live in this episode, uh, because it's not... We've got another league game in between, but I'll just play that off camera and come back for the draw, because it's going to be a slightly shorter one anyway, because it's only one game. So I figure the least we can do is put the draw for the next round in it um but i'm getting a bit ahead of myself here we don't know if we're even going to be in the next round of the champions league yet we've got to put on one hell of a show today and i feel like we've turned up in the form a lot lately we've actually only conceded game goals in one game we've kept four clean sheets out of five matches it's just that one game was four nil to uh, sporting eh, not great right so it reckons they're going to play that same 4-4-2 and i'm tempted to just kind of do what we did in the home leg and hope that we can get a goal this time and just be a bit better frankly so first team it is as well and it is the full strength first team rally he impressed me a little bit uh, in the game against Shakhtar. Sveni up there too with Dunga, Ricardo Jankowski, Bruno Dip, Andre Cunha this time will get to play, Simovic, Santos, Vasic and Harmat. And on the bench, Tadic, Olsen, Krejci, Bravo, Samedo, uh, not Trevino. I'd rather have um, Surgord on the bench than him. Changed my mind completely. I'm going to put Orestes Francescos on the bench as well because he's actually done all right in games when he's played. So we can bring him in in a, a number of different positions if we need to. Right, without further ado, we need to get into this. We this needs to be the best performance of the season from us. Um, a draw is fine. You know... <sighs> That's why I want to set us up to be a little bit tighter and not overdo it, really. Um, if we have to settle for like a nil-nil like we did at home, then we do. At least we'd get through with that. I can't believe Sporting scored that late goal and screwed us in the last episode. Right, let's go for it. Just occurred to me I made a massive error there and I didn't put Diego Maurizio on the bench. Instead, we've got Hertzeg and Rally. They're not bad, but... You know, Maurizio is the top scorer for us in all competitions, and he did get that goal against Sporting, and I kind of wish I'd had him on the bench, but we're going to have to make do now. Got to mark the crap out of Salazar. Ooh, they've got a few players that are on the verge of suspension, and they are not looking uh, particularly sprightly as well. Some of these are pretty low, like, for starting a game anyway. Uh, they're going to get knackered towards the end of this one, so that might be something we can exploit and just keep things tight for now. Uh, try to tire them out, maybe. Honestly, my main hope is that we won't have to rely on us doing too much today, and hopefully Shakhtar can finally win a game, or at least just hold Sporting. If they can just get a nil-nil or something at home against Sporting, we might be all right. I am a little bit worried about their strikers today, um, and they're the home team, so we've not been amazing away from home in Europe so far this season. Losing at Sporting, uh, we did win against Shakhtar 4-0, though, so balance is out, I guess. We only need a draw here. That's the kind of the key thing to note, though. Simovic already booked. Not ideal to start this one off, frankly. Well, we're keeping a lot of possession against them, which is very unlikely. Uh, this is what I kind of thought would happen in the first leg, actually, with us playing against a 4-4-2. But today, they seem to actually be giving us the ball for once. Fine by me. We'll just keep it. They've already qualified, as far as I know. So they don't really have much on the line here, other than winning the group, which I guess is quite important. Jankowski time. Ball in. Simovic. Oh, I thought we were going to get a chance, and it turns out it might be their chance. Potaro. Hopefully, he's not the sort of player you want to be bombing forward with. Curcio. And that's fine. Straight to Harmat. Surely that's not the chance, though. Other game appears to still be nil-nil as well. Ricardo. Jankowski now. Pushing. There we go. Ricardo. Look at the space for Dip. Can we find one of his brilliant crosses? Ball in. Rally. Over the bar. That was a tough one. Like, I would have been very surprised had Rally put that in. Uh, yeah, the possession's really sticking with us today. That's what I would say. Um, yeah, we will close down Curcio a little bit, but it's not like the possession's faded away. We've still got 60%. Ball's around the side for Andre Cunha! Oh, God, he's hit the post. Of all people, if he'd given us the lead there, that would have been massive for us. We've been really decent so far. Limiting Schalke completely. Oh, no. I thought we were going to concede from a corner. That would have been the worst thing. Ball in. Headed oh, God, no. Botario. Curcio on the edge, and that's easily wide. Schalke have not started this game well. Pleasing. The other pleasing thing for me is the fact that the other game is still nil-nil as well, so... At the moment, we're in... Oh, my God, what a ball. Go on, keeper. Oh, what a brilliant piece of sweeper-keeper play there from Harmat. That's actually really good. I haven't seen a keeper do that in a long time. Ball in. Oh, no. No! No! Just as I give him credit for being a brilliant sweeper-keeper, he doesn't come for it when he should have done. I, I don't understand that. Oh, for goodness sake. We've started this game so well, and then... I don't know what the defender's doing here. He just starts backing away from it. Just come and collect the ball! It's Schalke 1, B67 nil, and now we trail. Uh, it doesn't change anything at the moment, but it could change an awful lot if Sporting were to get themselves a goal here. Oh, God, I feel so... That sucks. We've played quite well so far. I just haven't created anything concrete yet. Can we afford to just throw everything... We don't, I don't really want to throw everything at them too much because they do have two strikers on the pitch, which could cause problems for us. Uh, let's face it, Vera. Okay, well cut out here by Simovic. Up for rally. Can he find a pass, perhaps? 
Drops it back for Jankowski. We need those overlaps and fast. Dunga. Here we go. Dip. Come on. Crossing in time. Ball in. Rally. Oh. Oh, well, I don't know what Barbier is doing there. Another a good chance for us there. That could have been one all. Dunga takes it short. Right. It looks like it's going to be one nil to Schalke at half time. I think we can be a bit. It's a bit harsh on us, really. It's their only shot on target. And we could have done better with that if Harmer hadn't. If he'd just come out like he just did previous to that. Svenningsen's been poor again. Uh, he's not getting a lot of space, really. They look fired up. That's what I want to see. I just want to check the tactics to make sure that Svenningsen... I don't know. He seems to just not been operating so well this year. Move into channels. He just doesn't seem to do it. These guys. Is there anything I can add to this? They're already set to cross on the byline. So I'm not sure what more we can do. Apart from aim crosses at target man, perhaps. I'm going to tell them to aim the crosses at target man. And I might actually switch rally to be a target man. For this second half. Just to give him a bit more... I don't know whether that will change up. We'll just see. I just want to see if he's capable of playing that role. And it might allow us to use him as a focal point and maybe bring Dunga as an attacking player to run off of him a little bit with Svenningsen in the second half. Uh, maybe that's what this needed. Maybe Rally, when he does play, should be more of a target man. He's he's much more than that. He's much more um, competent than that in for the most part. But maybe that's what we need in this second period. It's like a bit different. Uh, as it is at the moment, things are still okay because it is still nil-nil over in Ukraine. But I want to see us push a bit. I want to see more from us in this second half. We've been okay in the first half. Football in, headed away. Jankowski now. That's more like it, Ricard. Oh, my goodness. Whoa. Oh, it was a corner kick. He's had to tip it over. But just spread that wide, mate. Come on, keep getting balls into the box. Let's not mess around. Uh, maybe that will encourage more crosses to certain people. Who knows? We'll see, I guess. I, I just feel like I'm awaiting the Shakhtar scoreline where Sporting inevitably score in the 95th minute and win the game and put us out. I, I could just feel it. Uh, but we need to make sure that they can't do that. You know, we need to take it upon ourselves to go and get another goal here. They've only, they've still only had one shot on target in the entire game. And it was the god, they've done it again. Manek's gone straight past his man. I thought that was going to go in. I genuinely thought that was going to go in. Cross is completed. Even our cross completion isn't that good. And that might be though, because we're not, I might start hitting some early crosses. Just getting some ball into the box, be a bit more long ball. Passing to, mm, we're not really getting a lot of space. There's a bit pointless doing that. Um, I don't know. I just want to get some more balls on Rally's head. He's still the best player of the strike force here. Um, right, they're making some substitutions themselves. Salazar's looking knackered. Krushka, he looks like a fresh. Curcio, Krushka. Curcio again. Back post. Vlasic, right. Yank oh, God. What are you doing? Just bring it down and take it. You've got to look longer there. Manic, right. This time, don't let him skip. Cunha is not having the best day so far. He's getting skinned by Manic over and over again. Um, maybe we should... God, look at the state of some of these guys. I'm going to tell people to tight mark Manek, close him down, and get one of his weaker foot. Maybe even tackle him harder. Just get him, get him rattled for the final 23 minutes so they can't get in in that space. The possession's certainly gone back um, their way a little bit. Right, substitutions have to happen. I want to see who my assistant thinks is the best option here. They reckon Bravo minorly, so we're going to go with him. Uh, whoa, whoa, is the game still playing in the background? What the hell? Okay. <laughs> uh, what other changes? What other changes? Cunha hasn't been fantastic. And he's a bit knackered. And maybe this maybe this is what we should do, actually. Replace both the wingbacks to get extra... Try and take them on with our fresh legs. Um, get these guys as far forward as possible. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to try and do. Use our fresh legs against their tired legs. With two new wingbacks, hopefully we can find some more opportunities to get some crosses in for rally. Uh, that's the only thing I can think of. Chance from a corner, perhaps. Uh, I think Dunga's going to take it. Cleared away. Ricardo's on the edge. He will shoot. And it's definitely wide. Poor from us. I still think we're a bit unlucky to be behind in this game, though. I, I gotta say, I, I, I still feel a bit hard done by on it, frankly. We've had, they've basically had one chance in the entire game and they've put it in the back of the net. And it could have easily been avoided. Jankowski now. In for Rally. Not really where you want that pass, but okay. Dunga. Out wide for Semedo. Rally needs to make a move right now. Bravo. Rally! Yes! Schalke won. B67 won. Rally comes up clutch. Oh, God goodness me. I think we've deserved that on the night. I don't think Schalke have deserved to win this game. Rally does brilliantly here. Uh, sets up the play. Dunga drops it out wide for Bruno Dip. I was surprised that he took this, not Dip, uh, sorry, Semedo. Knocked down beautifully by Bravo. Keeper can't get to it and Rally puts B67 level on the night and that would be enough to send us through. I mean, we were going through anyway, but if we can come on and find a winner now with this new style, maybe, just maybe we can win this group. Um, because Shakhtar, the other game, still nil-nil as far as I know, but that could easily change. Now we'd need a two-goal swing for that to happen. Rally's in behind. I don't know what's even going on here. He's got to square it. Oh, no. Oh, what is he doing? Just square that across and Bravo's in for an probably the winner.
I don't want to go anymore. If we get a one-all draw and it gets us through, then that's what we have to do. Uh, on another day, we probably could have won this game, but it doesn't look like that's going to be the case today. Rally has bailed us out massively there, and in theory now has put us through to the next round of the Champions League. Uh, it looks like it would have happened even with a defeat, because Sporting doesn't appear uh, are going to get themselves anything from the game against uh, Shakhtar, which is nice. Uh, gives us a bit more of a cushion, but still, just think how close it was. Uh, rally. Ah, not quite. It does still kind of feel like there's one more opportunity in this game, though. Um... Because there's still a minute to go. Espinosa. Don't you dare let them have the lead back. Manic. Into the channel for Espinosa. Get your tackles in, lads. There's enough players in there to clear this. Watch this go in the top corner. Oh, and harm up with the big save. Um, yeah, I, I think we've deserved to get the draw here. Rally does well. Brilliantly, in fact. He's got too many players around him, though. Ricardo, please use the wide man. Bravo's in! Yes! Yes! Oh my god, Schalke won B67-2 in the 93rd minute. Mariano Bravo has come off the bench and changed the game, and we are going to fucking win the group. Apologies for the language, but I don't even give a shit. Ricardo, what a ball through this is. Bravo with a wonderful touch, and he puts it in the back of the net, and we're going to win here and win the group in the process. What a night this is. What a comeback. Uh-oh. No, 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 no. No, you don't. Dunga, there we go, lumps it downfield for Bravo, takes all the pressure off, looks long for Rally, and it's easily cleared up, and Rodriguez with the tackle, and we've turned it around and won the game, Schalke won, B67-2, Rally's goal in the 78th minute, assisted by Mariano Bravo, who then scores the winner in the 93rd minute, holy shit, it didn't need to happen, because, of course, as far as I'm aware, the other game is still nil-nil. But we've got the win that we needed, that, where was that in the home game, what a performance, uh, in the end, I think we deserve the win, Bravo's just bailed us out hugely there. Right. So, uh, got a game of camera. I think it's against Silkeball, but I actually can't remember. But then we'll come back for the draw for the next round. What a way to turn this group around after losing 4-0 to uh, Sporting Lisbon. Phew. Bloody hell. I'm knackered now. So we just had the one game off camera before the Champions League draw. Uh, luckily, Rally scored a hat-trick in this one, which was pretty damn nice. And one of them was a penalty. Olsen was stretched off in the 90th minute, though, with a twisted ankle. And will miss four to five weeks. But it doesn't matter, though, uh, because by the time we come back after the Christmas break, he'll be uh, back to being his fresh-legged self again. Unfortunately, we conceded a goal. Christian Jensen scored off of one of our mistakes, which was a big, big problem. And we didn't manage to keep a clean sheet. So that is now the fifth goal that we've conceded this season in 19 matches. I want to concede under 10 goals in the entire season. I do think it's going to be tough but we're going to give it a crack but what we're really here for is the champions league knockout draw now uh, i thought we'd just quickly take a little look at who's actually in this uh draw so we're going to do this now a few draws so seeded teams are us chelsea man city real madrid Bayern munich juventus man united and tottenham uh that's literally four english sides uh a danish team a spanish team an italian team and a german team it's not really these guys that we oh god paris Saint Germain. I don't see Paris Saint-Germain. I guarantee you we end up playing Paris Saint-Germain. Right, let's see who's in the pot two. Um, Atletico, Benfica. Please not Benfica. Uh, Borussia Mönchengladbach, Marseille, Paris Saint-Germain, Monaco, Schalke, we obviously can't play, or Sevilla. So, out of those teams, I'd like to avoid Benfica because we've we've had problems with them in the past and they also put 10 past Panathinaikos. Um, Gladbach, potentially. Marseille. Monaco, Sevilla, one of those four, and I will be happy. I want to avoid Paris Saint-Germain. We're going to do an automatic draw, so we actually get to see it all live. Um, I hope to God that we don't get Paris Saint-Germain. That's the one I really want to avoid. Benfica will play against Real Madrid. Okay, so that's them out of the pot. Paris Saint-Germain will play against Bayern Munich. Of course it's Paris versus Bayern Munich. Go on, give us Glad back. That would be quite a fun one. No, they get Man United. Uh, okay. Atletico, I'd rather not play Atletico if we could avoid it. They get Spurs. Okay, this is looking quite decent here. Sevilla. Go on, give us Sevilla. We can have them. Yes! Okay, I'll take that. We've beaten Sevilla before. Weren't they in our group last year? Schalke will play against Manchester City. Okay, Monaco will play against Juventus. Interesting. And the final one will be Chelsea against Marseille. Um, Sevilla is a proper winnable tie i think there's a real chance of us appearing in the quarterfinals this season uh, i think that's given us a huge chance and just think about it like this if we'd have played if we'd have if mariano bravo hadn't scored that 93rd minute goal we'd be playing manchester city uh bravo has just possibly not only put us in the next round but might have even put us one round further with that goal that's how important that goal is uh to this save what a huge moment that is um we get to play Sevilla. Not that they're a pushover or anything, but I feel like they're a team that we are definitely capable of beating over two legs. That is for sure. Oh, this is going to be fun. Right. So, of course, join me in the next episode for that. So we'll just quickly see where that sort of lines up. So it says unknown still. Is that because I haven't finished the draw? Uh, I don't know. I think you have to skip a day in order for it to actually put it in. But the point is, 
come back after Christmas. We've got all Borg in the first game. Wow, these are starting early or the league is starting late. I don't know. Uh, then we've got ourselves uh, the tie or the first tie uh, against Sevilla, which is, I don't even know if it's home or away. I think we're away. I don't even bloody know. Uh, then a huge lump of games in between uh, before we come back with the second leg against Sevilla. So it's going to be an action-packed episode next time. Do not worry about that. Anyway, if you have enjoyed this, and I really hope you have, we've won a lot of games in a row lately, uh, then drop a like on the video. We are through to the next round and we're playing Sevilla in the knockout stages. A real good chance of getting to the quarterfinals this year. I want to get at least to the quarterfinals. If we could go one stage further this season, uh, that would be really, really awesome. I just really don't think we're going to be able to do enough to win it. We haven't looked good enough. We lost 4-0 to Sporting, but you never know what we can do. It might be the turning point for us. So yeah, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. That'd be awesome as well. And I'll see you guys in the next episode for the final round. Or, well, yeah, for the final set of games this season, I suppose. I, I don't know. Um, hopefully it won't be the last episode. Well, it certainly won't, even if we win it. So anyway, I'll see you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.